Ding, ding, ding. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm International Arbiter Michael J. Hummer, and this is Winning with Chess Psychology. Now, before I was an administrative guy, I had many successes in my chess career. Do you think I got all good by uh, studying and, you know, reading chess books? Anything like that? No. No, right. <laughs> no. I sure didn't. I sure didn't. I had to use my mind and play mind games. So I'm going to go over a game from two years ago. It was the Saturday night special, December 2017. So as an organizer, I decided to schedule the Saturday night special when all the grandmasters were at the Pan Ams, okay? So all the kids from Webster, all the slew grandmasters, they were, they were nowhere to be found. And there's $1,800 cash, unconditionally guaranteed, up for grabs. So uh, you know I'm putting myself in this thing. All right, so there's one grandmaster in the tournament, Akshat Chandra, and of course, our pal, world champion, national master Julian Prolico of the Pro Chess League fame. Of course, I'm the world champion manager. <laughs> and I got the rings to prove it, yeah. So anyhow, so they're in the tournament, so they're the top two dogs. So it's a four round event, game 15 plus two second increment, just like the Pro Chess League. So, so I know I'm gonna play like a scrub in round one, Nishal Ada probably in round two, so easy win. So then round three, shucks, I might have to be paired up against somebody like that. So what do I do? I take a strategic round three half point buy. All right, so I'm two and zero, oh, and so now I got the half point, okay? And now if Sanad would win his game, if you know Sanad, it's basically I'm going to be playing for second place is $400, and I would be paired up against Sanad. And put me against Sanad, $400 in the middle, I'm going to take it every day of the week. All right. So unfortunately, Sanad could not beat WCM Iris Zhao. Shucks. Well, that kind of foiled that plan. So now Julian has three points. Aksha Chandra has three points. Alex Marler, who I am paired with, has two points, along with a big crop of field with two points. And of course, I have two and a half points. So basically, here's the situation. If I win my match against Alex, I'll finish with three and a half. If Julian draws Akshat or loses, it doesn't matter. We're going to all split $400, okay? So if I beat Alex, bottom line, no matter what, I get $400. If I would draw Alex, I would get like third place money, 75 bucks or something. Now, Alex Marler has to beat me because if Alex Marler draws me, okay, he'll, he'll be out of prize contention. Okay, so you have to know what your opponent's mindset is going in. So if Alex Marler draws, like Julian already has three points, Akshay's got three points, and I'll have three points because I'll have the draw and he'll have two and a half. So there's no way in the world he would ever agree to a draw. Got everybody got that? I already have my buy. <laughs> Only one half point buy available. So here it is. I got the black pieces, but I'm going to pretend like I'm going for the draw. All right. So here we go. So Alex starts out D4, D6. All right. So E5, hoping that he takes, but he's smarter than that. So I take, he takes, knight attacks the knight. Will he take it? No. It develops his knight, I attack his pawn. Well, Julian, what do you think about that move? I put a question mark by it. Eh. So it's attacking my D pawn that's protected four different ways or something. So all right, so I develop, he brings out his queen. I'm like, take my bishop, he does, all right. So now castle. So he's obviously going for a win here, right? He does not want the draw. A draw, he's got no money. Okay. So now I play a little aggressive, but that's about as aggressive as I'm going to get. So now he puts his bishop on this long diagonal. So, so he's got threats of like e5 and so forth. So I get my rook off the uh, diagonal. Now he's going for me, g4. 
Knight up. E5. Okay, so he's attacking my knight. So I attack his queen. Counter attack. He moves his queen. So my knight is still under attack. I think the computer actually wants me to just give it up. But I'm going back home, okay? I'm going home. I'm going home. So he takes. I take. He attacks me. I retreat. So this... Uh, this time control is game 15 plus two second increment. Now in the pro chess league, that two second increment really comes into play because you're playing on the internet, you can pre-move and everything. But in reality, when you're in that time scramble, that two seconds doesn't help you at all, unless you have a, a big winning position. So Alex is on the attack, and I'm just making simple moves, like look at my pieces, they're all back there, so I'm making my moves rather quickly, and he's really thinking how am I going to beat him. So he is down extensively on time. All right, so he's going for it, g5. And now I'm like, okay, this is how I'm going to win. He's going to get under a minute and blunder, and I win, okay? <laughs> so that's, that's my goal. So rook c8, that, I like it. So he attacks my knight. I better protect it. But by protecting it, what did I leave undefended? Oh, geez. Yeah, it's a jarn. The d6 pawn. Oh, now, now, I honestly think about resigning. But for how long do you think I think about resigning? Two point two, point two seconds. I'm like, get that garbage out of here. Come on, we got the plan to win, right? Just get them under a minute and get them. All right, so, so I'm like, all right. And, and I'm like, hey, you know, a few moves ago, look at, look at how bad my night was, right? That's why the computer wanted me to just, just get, get, get rid of it, just get on with the show. But now, you know, you got to look on the positives. There's not many positives in uh, this position. But hey, my knight's at, out. He's in a pin, but he's out, all right? And maybe I can castle, right? All right, so knight attacks the pin piece, so I take it, takes it. So, all right, so what am I attacking? Don't say anything. Let, let's let the, the, little, the littlest guys. All right, Felix. Um, you can How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I wasn't playing you. Because he's like, you want my bishop? Wait till my rook says something about it. And then, good old checkmate. <laughs> so just as I... Uh, so just as I uh, foresaw, he got under a minute, he blundered, I won $400, and way to go. Now, this was not the first time I actually played Alex Marler. Can you believe it? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, so, so I uh, took a long, long uh, layoff off of chess in the mid-2000s. Uh, so, so I come back. You know, am I studying? Am I reading? No, no. But I've got, I've got the will to win, and I've got some uh, imagination, let's say. So, so I'm, I come back after a long layoff, and I'm on board one. Like, like nobody's any good. You know, I got, I got, I got it down. So now I get paired. I'm like, like a 1600 here, and I get paired against 1800 Alex Marler. At this point, I have no idea who he is. However, he looks like my cousin Matt. And guess what? Every time I play my cousin Matt, <laughs> checkmate. All right. So, so I've got the psychological edge on Alex because he might think he's hot stuff, 1800, but in my mind, I'm thinking he's like a 400 at best. All right. So believe it or not, I had many successes as a child. And the most one was Chess Life, 1998. You're gonna hear a lot about 1998 in this lecture. All right, so there is a published author, Dragon Sicilian, Michael J. Cummer, St. Louis, Missouri, so there's no mistakes, okay? <laughs> What's your opinion of E4, C5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, uh, Bishop G7, Bishop E3, Queen B6, and the Accelerated Dragon? 
All right, this, this is the comer variation, queen to b6, right here. And what does the, uh, what does the guy say, Grandmaster Larry Evans? It looks risky. A critical line is knight d5, queen a5, check, bishop d2, or c3, queen d8, knight b5 with initiative. And somehow this 1800 kid that looks like my cousin figures it out. All right, <laughs> so, uh-oh. So he got, maybe he read chess life and, and knew exactly who I was. All right. So what, what do I do here? So I don't want to get forked, right? So I play rook b8. He checks me. But I got his b pawn. So I'm looking up in the world. <laughs> so the game goes. And it's, you know, it's a fight. I get the pin on. He protects it. Just keep piling on the pin pieces. Get the big check. Get another check. I got another check. I'm out of checks. All right. Checks. <laughs> All right. So I'm attacking the F pawn. He protects it. I get his G pawn. He gets my B pawn. Rook takes. Okay. So now I'm like, oh man, I don't know what to do. It's just going to be a draw. It looks like I, I have four pawns to two. But he's got a massive, massive threat of rook c to c7. Is there anything I can do? I'm going to hide while you think about it. All right. People at home, you figure it out. I want to hear from the man in the orange. Uh, rook a. All right, rook a. Where do, where do you want Rook A to go? Because you got the right piece. You're touching the right piece right now. Check. <laughs> yeah, it's a check. It's better. You can do something even better with that Rook. Do you kind of have your hand up or not? Kind of hand. All right, adjourn. Yeah, Rook F2. And then... If he plays down here, guess what? I take, and now I'm protecting the, uh, the dude. I'm protecting the, uh, yeah, protecting the F pawn. But I can't find it, so I just say, let's just draw, whatever. <laughs> All right, call it a day. So I won some money in that tournament, but that was a lot of fun. So believe it or not, we can do that on the international stage. So we just hosted the GM IM St. Louis Invitational in which our homegrown talent, world champion of the Pro Chess League, uh, Julian Prolico participated. Unfortunately, Julian got off to a not so hot start, but I gave him a piece of advice and he put the pro in Prolico. So if anybody knows, Good old Owen O bidding. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he's a, well, I guess I should say he's a 1300 that, he's a true 1300, let's just say. And um, anyway, Julian's opponent, Yuri Krikun, looks very similar to Owen. So I was like, Owen, just pretend you're playing or Julian, pretend Creekerin is Owen, and you'll have no difficulties at all. So, so how do you think this game ends up? Pretty good, huh? So big check. And now, what? Is this the game? Yeah. All right, this is the game. This is live. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> now, Julian admitted to me. Now, when he played c6, he was thinking, that, that looks like an Owen move for sure. All right, so gave him some confidence. And now this kid really plays like Owen. Like, like what would you play in this position? So I just played bishop g5. What's the threat? Bishop yeah, right. So what should you play if you're a normal player? Yes. Yeah, I, if I was playing, I would play bishop e7. What's my bishop doing on this diagonal anyway? Wow, it's like biting at nails, right? It's protected two different ways. 
So he just lets his uh, king get destroyed, double isolated pawns. And now Julian's on the attack. And notice Julian doesn't throw in this worthless check. Very good, Julian. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, there it is. He couldn't resist. He couldn't resist. But at least he waited for it. He, he's like, maybe this move, maybe this move. But he finally did it. It had a point. You want to check them. You, you always check, right? And now Julian's going to get some monster checks in here. Big check. And now this, this is when the game really turns. Is now, uh, obviously, after queen takes queen, check. You can't take with the king because 96 is coming in. But guess what? 96 is coming in anyway. And one of your pawns is going to fall. Obviously, uh, if I play b6, I'll just remove the defender. Obviously. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just remove the defender anyway. But I won't. <laughs> and now Julian's really good. He's got his knight just on a beautiful square, just dominating this worthless bishop. And uh, he's protecting everything. Big check, just to show him who's boss. <laughs> that Rook attacks the pawn. Uh oh, uh oh. Now, can, can you find Julian's move to seal the deal? Uh, you've seen this game, Marshall. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Felix, all right. Can you break? Nah, you might get checked. <laughs> oh, oh, the sandwich kid, all right. No, yeah, but you do like moving that rook, huh? All right. Yeah. Well, at least you don't get checked. Anybody? I guess, I guess, Julian, you, you might be the best kid in the house. All right, so the threat is rook takes f3 check. Do we want that to happen? No. <laughs> no. Anyway, maybe if we're creaking. But who else we got here? All right, Felix with guest number two. Beautiful. All right, and now you get your king on e4, and it's very convenient because that's where the white winning white pieces go on the DGT board. So once he played king e4, he, it, instead of moving the king, he just put his king on d5 and called it a day, right? <laughs> kind of. All right. But that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. So, so good for Julian. So Julian got the win, and now... As in my game against Alex Marler, you got to know the situation of your, your standings and of your opponents. So Talia, uh, W, F, M, W, F, M, I am, W, I am, Talia Cervantes was playing in a I am norm tournament. And anyway, so in order to get an I am norm, she needed like six and a half points. She had four and a half points going into whatever, uh, the penultimate round, round eight of nine. So she needed two wins. And her last two games, she was paired against international master, international master. In a lot of these tournaments, there's no 30 move draw rule and there's a lot of quick, quick draws, as you'll see in momentarily. But Thalia's opponent didn't know what the score was or anything. So he just sat down, played a few moves, offered draw, and Thalia just laughed at him and proceeded. Like, no, I'm going for an IM tournament, a norm. So good for Thalia. She, she beat the IM. Unfortunately, did not get the IM norm. So into this tournament, uh, this guy Titus had uh, six points, needed six and a half to clinch his IM norm, or his to clinch his grandmaster title norm. So Steven Zirk, his round nine opponent, comes up to me before, uh, after round eight, before round nine, and was like, hey, what, what's the deal? How many points does Titus need to become a, get his GM norm? And I'm like, a half. And Zirk's like, great. I can just go party at the chess house all night long and not have to study, because look at how this game goes. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's who. 
Would you like a draw? Yeah. I'm a grandmaster. Good. I'm going back to bed. All right. So, so that's why you need to know the tournament situations at all times. So look who else knew the tournament situations. We're going back to November 1998. This is the uh, class U.S. Not just any class championship. This is the U.S. class championship. All right. So I'm 4-0. And I'm paired against the other guy, 4-0. What do you think's gonna happen? Like, take a look at this one. Right. Yep, oh, no more moves. Yep, draw. <laughs> now I got my name in Chess Life Magazine. All right, you're gonna show that, Danny. Chess Life, all right, good, yay. Yeah, Chess Life, yeah, yeah give it up. Yeah, it's okay to clap, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. All right, so we all know about the tournament situations now. So let's go back. So since we're in 1998, let's stay in 1998. We lived the good old days. All right, so I am playing in the uh, state chess championship, February 28th, 1998. So in order to become the state champion, which is my ultimate goal, you have to go 4 0. If you get a draw, just forget about it. Okay? So we're going to speed through the uh, game. I'm white. We're going to get to this ending here. All right. So now we have a rook end game. Okay? I, I'm white. I'm up a pawn. And, and, uh, and the guy's in check. So it's all falling apart for him. All right. <laughs> so should I castle in this position? No. Yeah, make your king a warrior in the end game. Even a jern knows that, right? All right, so yeah, you want to trade? Fine. So I'm up a pawn in an endgame, right? But I'm going to make a very, very silly move here. Oh. So what should black play here? Alex Guo. Do you want to be state champion? <laughs> Eric Tinchenko. G4. Yeah, always check, okay? How hard is it? <laughs> All right, so he checked me, and now my nemesis, his father, is watching the game. And he's like, oh, draw, draw. So I was like the guy's biggest competition. And um, so, let's see. Should I just call it a day? Nope. E6 to the rescue. You don't have to calculate out anything. It's just, I got to go for the win, right? Can he do it? Is it going to be fast enough? Uh-oh. It looks like he's going to queen first. Should I be afraid? No, because no, it's check. <laughs> Another check. And now I knew he was going to play this move. What move do you think he plays? Yes. Check. Have you ever heard of a thing called the cross check? Boom. Game over. <laughs> all right. So, so, all right. So that was round two of four. I got a very easy round in round three. And now I get to play my nemesis in round four. This is for the state title, everybody. All right. So can he prevail? So I had the white pieces again. I got the white pieces against the, the tough people. So that was very nice of me. <laughs> or of the director. All right, so we'll speed through. Remember, so, so there was a, a Russian guy, just like maybe it's Eric Tinchenko's cousin, Andre. <laughs> right before, in November 97, get this. So I thought, wow, it's like me and this guy with the hat. We're going we're gonna to face off for the championship. But then Andre moves to Joplin, Missouri. Anybody heard of Joplin, Missouri? We got some fans in Joplin, Missouri. Hey, hello. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with Joplin, Missouri. But he moves to Joplin. He's like the ringer. And he's like, I want to be state champion, too. It's like, no. So anyway, but I'm like, I'm going to win because I beat this, the defending champion. I'm going to be state champion. So that's, that's what my, my plan is, at least. So... 
this is not very good for me. I don't know how I'm going to win. And now this is the critical point. He gets the A8 file. I'm doomed. So he's going to give me a big check. I do not like to be checked, but sometimes it's inevitable. Sorry. <laughs> so now he's threatening to take. My bishop's in a pin. Rook takes. Rook takes check. So I got to do some maneuvering. More maneuvering. More. We're both oblivious to, to a check. Totally oblivious. And why do I play this move? It's beyond me. So what move can he just play to laugh at me? Rick takes C4. Dang. I'm never going to be state champion. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Acharn. <laughs> uh, but check. He finally sees the check. Now, do you think I'm like, check? No, because that's not psychology. <laughs> right, right. And this is winning with chess psychology. So, so if, let's just say, Black's king is on h8, what move would Black play instantly? This is from 1998, Dennis. I'm just about ready to beat uh, the defending state champion. He doesn't realize he's in check. Always, oh, yeah. The, you know, everybody know how much the uh, king is worth? Yeah. That, oh, he does know. Nine billion, points. nine billion points, right. So you think you would know where your nine billion point piece is and what's attacking them at all times. So what would, what would black play if his king was Mysteriously on h8. Take on g4. Nope. Yes. He would play rook f4 check. <laughs> no. So gone too. All right. So here he is. Comer. I'm coming to get your rook. Sorry, Robert. Touch move, buddy. You know where you have to put it. <laughs> Boom! Right there. So I take, and now my nerves are like at an all-time high here. I take, and so now, look, he plays Julian's move. He's like, he's like, he's got his hat on. He's like, I'm undeterred. I'm still gonna come back and beat your check. So now, winning with chess psychology. All I'm saying right now, keep yourself in the pin. Keep yourself in the pin. Keep yourself in the pin. So guess what he plays? <laughs> and then this is the time to slam your piece. Boom. <laughs> yeah. So he's in the pen, so he takes, takes. And now, you know, okay, he's got one guy that can beat you still. So just yeah, get him off the board and then game over. All right, so that's how I became 1998 state chess champion. So if anybody talks about 1998, that's what I'm referring to. All right. So we still got a couple games left. Yeah, we've got a couple games left. Maybe because Dennis just showed up, we got a game or two. So you got to know your, uh, your opponent's mindset. So this is a game I played on the eve of the Super Bowl, Rams against the Titans in uh, January 2000, okay? So I was having a decent tournament, but you know, it's the last round. I'm not really in prize contention. So uh, let's make sure what color I am though. Uh-oh. I had white, I had white. All right, so, so right. So it's, it's, a, it's like a friendly tournament, a fun tournament, but anyway, so, I'm out of prize contention. I don't, I've never played this before, but whatever, I'll play. And so the game's kind of silly. I am attacking his knight. Bishop takes, knight takes. Okay, so now he gets tricky, takes with the rook, because obviously if I take back with the uh, bishop, he's got check, then another check, and then I have to sack back. So that's not really how the game goes. So I see it and uh, continue on. I'll make some lift for my king. 
Oh, wait, 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 we got a question in the audience here. Um, What's Right, I don't understand work D7 either. Is that your question? What's, what's the deal with? All right, so he's got a check. Obviously, I have to take back with the king. He gets another check, move my king away. And so now, it, this kid is like 200 points lower rated than me. And he offers me a draw. And I'm like, well, the Super Bowl's tomorrow. If I would end up losing this game somehow, I'm going to have a bad taste in my mouth all day, and it's going to spoil the Super Bowl. So I'm like, sure, why not draw? So then, then I, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm talking some Super Bowl talk with my buddies or whatever. And then the kid's like all like red-faced and all mad. And then his dad comes up to me and like, you know, it was just, he was just offering the draw because, you know, uh, you know, it was just like his psychological way, you know. And it's like, dude. It's not my problem. You offered the draw. You know, it's like, we're not going to reset up the board and play from there. Like he pretended like he didn't offer the draw. It's like, you offered the draw. So, so if you offer a draw, don't be shocked if they take it. Got it? <laughs> All right. All right. So, we got to show... The famous of all famous games. Is everybody ready for this one? No. No. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't be either. You might want to get refill on the popcorn and soda for this one. Because this is, we've already gone on over this one with the chair, but it's just, it's just too good to, it's too good to be true. All right, this is like one of the most famous games of all time. It's between Kummer and, uh, the guy in the chair, but the guy is not here tonight, unfortunately. <laughs> He's seen the videotape. All right, so I have the white pieces. So you should always be playing before move one. So I, I am, this is what, I, this is the Knights tournament. So, so this is, a, you pretty much knew the pairings like a week before. Now this guy had white in round one, okay? And then requested a half point buy. So then he thought that he should get white in the third round as, you know, he skipped his black. But that's not the way chess works. You know, if, if you, you, play, you play alternating things. So just because you skip a week doesn't mean you automatically get the, the color, the same color again. Does that make sense? All right. So he tries to sit down as white anyway. I'm like, get over there. All right. So here we go. So, I'm in no mood to back up. All right, so we're playing psychological. So, so not, not the best opening ever, but whatever. Now I play a good move here, believe it or not. Anybody see a good move? Nope. <laughs> yeah, let's try again. D5, yeah. All right, so I'm attacking his queen. He moves it. I castle. And now I play the best move of all time. I know some people have seen it. It's like. I've never seen this before, but it's cute. Hold on, yeah, let us. <laughs> it's like shaking your fist right at him. <laughs> what is it? You might have had it. Did he, did he say it on accident? He said Bobby Fisher moment. Bobby Fisher moment. Play, yeah. A Bobby Fisher moment. Yeah, right You've seen this game. You, how, you, how could you not remember this game? <laughs> Every other move is is good for black. Eric, you just saw this like a week ago. Oh, you know the answer. Yeah. Oh. I want to hear from uh, Nike. Uh, is it you just copied off of Dennis. <laughs> no, but it's not Queen A4. No, that's you should know who you're copying off of too. Oh. When you, <laughs> so Jern's dying to say it, even though he's seen this probably 500 times. 
All right, adjourn, go ahead and say it. Bishop d8, double exclam. So the point is I'm attacking his undefended knight, and I'm threatening a move like knight to g5. And I get the pleasure of just slamming the bishop right down there. So, so he's like, this, this is another thing you do in chess a lot, psychological. When somebody like hurts you, you want to hurt them back, as we'll see later in this game. So he, now he's threatening a fork. So if you have a plan, just go with it, no matter what, really. No matter what. Queen. So he takes my rook. I'm going to take his rook. And now I should just play queen takes f1 and then just be so happy. But I decide to do it again, where right, you can't take my bishop, you can't take my bishop. Because if he takes my bishop, I play queen f7 check, he moves the king, I take the bishop with check, he moves his king, and then I take his knight, two for one. So you can't take me, you can't take me. And obviously, what move can black play now to really infuriate white? Yeah, I'll give you a hint. I'm threatening king takes f1. Yeah, Alex Google, you should get this. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now I can't take it. Now I'm mad. All right. But I do play the best move somehow. Big check. So I take. And so now... I, I, I get my emotions the best of me. So he plays a blunder here, but I can't capitalize on it. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, well, maybe not my blunder yet. So, king f8. So, if you ever have the, uh, the pleasure of coming down to the uh, St. Louis Chess Club and get to play me in a game of Blitz, so I'm a trash talker, okay? But the reason why I trash talk is because I'm, I'm so in the game, so focused, so everything, okay? So, so he plays king f8. Why did he play king f8? To, to try and come and win my knight on h8, right? So I play e6, right? So why did I play e6? Right, exactly, because I want to play knight f7. And then, right, this guy, he wrote, yeah, it's like, what was the point of that? It's like, and you just let me do it. So I would have just been all over him if we would have been able to talk. So now he's h6, and I, and I play here. And just goading him, just goading him to play g5. Just goading him. And of course, guess what? So unfortunately, I'm like, you play g5. You play g5, I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it. So he does it, and instantly I just take it. What move should have I have played here? Knight takes h6 check, right, and game over. But I, I, I got, the, got the best of me. All right, so takes, takes. Oh, so, so now he's so offended that I took his pawn so instantly. So instead of just taking back like any normal person, he's just, oh, he's so mad. Because he didn't understand that that was a blunder yet. So he's going to capture my pin piece. Just the satisfaction of saying check, all right? Well, hope it was worth it, buddy. All right, so I take, so now he takes, I take, and so now, here he goes. His bishops are under attack. Yep. Mm, what move does he play? Yeah, let's say he plays knight to d2. So that, that takes, check, I move, he takes, rook attacks the knight. So now, like, I have one way to win. I mean, what's the only way in the world white can win this game? <laughs> okay, you're right on both counts. Right. What, and what, of all the pawns, if it was my move, let's say it was my move, what of all the pawns in the world has the best chance of promoting? The E pawn. The e -pawn right, the one that's furthest ahead. Two away. If that doesn't get your head going like, oh my god, he's two away from queening with a check, I don't know what does, okay? So, so eliminate the guy's threat. 
Instead, check. It's like, good, I want my king up there. He's like, check. That's like, dude, you just gave me, you had a chance to take it and you blew it. Now, what should we make our king? A warrior. A warrior, right. Am I afraid of this discovered check? No. It's like, yeah, check me, check me. Nah, I won't, I won't give you the satisfaction. It's like, fine. All right, now I give him a powerful check. What's the difference between his checks and my check? What kind of checks? I, I did not. I've never used the word thank you check in my life. <laughs> but all right. But look, look, his checks were making my king walk way up there. My check is get in the corner. Yeah. And that's where he belongs. Right. All right. So here I come. So here he comes. And now I think, oh, man, I, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm threatening night check. Everything's great. And then he makes a great move. And now I'm like, oh, my God. Now he just stopped my little check and is attacking on F3 his check. So I'm like, oh, my God. How am I going to blow this game? So, so. Just go for it. Sometimes when, when you're down in there and things are looking at their worst, just go for it. Don't be like Alex Gruen, just walk out the door and just say, oh no, oh no, I, I can't bear to watch. You gotta just go for it. So if you were gonna go for it, what move would you make here? How does this hear from Felix Hahn? Yes, thank you. All the guy had to do. What, what's, what's the promotion square? E8. Just get your rook on E8 and you'll have no trouble at all. But nope, I got to get behind the C pawn. Yeah, that's going to really help you out, that C pawn. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, right, so he plays rook C8 and then I just calculate it. I'm like, it, you lost. You lost. You lost. So. Hopefully everybody else can be as good as me and calculate out uh, the next 20 moves. So I'm like, and this is when you want to stop it. Right, right, right. You always want to slam your pieces when you know you've won. Because if you slam it too quick, then they might be like, oh, I'm onto something. No, this guy's really serious. But now if you do it when he won, it's like, right, oh yeah, he is serious and there's nothing I can do. Boom, it's over. If his rook was on e8, uh, I, I, it would be a draw. But d2, I'm like, Psh, I knew you were going to play that. Nobody cares. <laughs> what do I play here? Do you think I play a check? Play rook d6. Yeah, rook d6. Dang right. Why, why, oh, because oh, rookie. Oh, yeah, I'm crazy. Yeah, little late, buddy. Little, little late. I'm getting a call from my boss. Hey, quit making fun of this guy in the chair already. You already did this program. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whatever. So, and so I can still blow it here. What, what, what's the losing move for White here? <laughs> Rook d8, right. I do not want to play rook d8 here. Even though it looks good, it's too complicated. It's too complicated. I'm not calculating that out. Yeah, yeah. And once you find a solution, even if it takes 15 moves, if you calculate it on your brain, stop looking for a shorter path. You're just going to confuse yourself, okay? So once you got a win, you see the win, implement the win. All right. What's up? King of six. <laughs> you just let the guy in the chair off the bat. Look at this, king of six. All right. He doesn't even want to go to f6. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I might even lose here now. Did I lose? Oh, I, I wouldn't lose because I, I, would, I would be too smart. I wouldn't take the rook. 
I would not give in this position if he played if 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 I of course I did not play King F6 in the game. King E6 actually does lose the game. King F6 draws the game because I have one move to play. Fine. If you really want me to give a check first, just like the man, let him out of the corner for no reason. Fine. Okay. So so obviously I play. Uh, in this position, anybody going once, going twice. Rook takes d2, right. Check. Check. Should I take the pawn? No. <laughs> Protect the rook. And then give the guy no hope. So what's a move that gives the guy no hope? Just crush his soul. Yeah. Nope. Nope. At Alex Guo. Nope. A4. Nope. A4. Good. A4. Go, go, just go play out the game, Tim. Nope. All right. H4. Oh, yeah, that's Right, way better. Oh, King G8. What's he trying to do? Where's he trying to go? This is the best move. This, this would just make the guy, well, he doesn't resign, but he might as well. Rook F4, boom, yeah. Yeah, you're never getting past here. You can't do it. And then I can just, no, never. You, you can figure out how to win this game from here, okay? Please. <laughs> No, no. So that's how I beat the guy in the chair that one day. All right. So, do you want to end on that high note, or do you want to want to see one more quick one? One more. One more. One more. Yeah. All right. All night long. All right. All right. So here we go. This. We got about two minutes left. All right, so this is a, a team tournament from January 1999. All right, so I'm still, in the, uh, I'm still in the zone. All right, so I'm playing a guy rated 700. So team tournaments are a lot of fun because, you know, there's camaraderie and, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun. So, so this, is, this is another way you can win a game. So you're playing. His knight's out of the way, so I'm crushing him. I'm crushing him. Just try to trade off everything. Threatening checkmate. What should you play here to stop checkmate? Uh, orange guy. Uh, uh, H6. H6. You know what other move stops checkmate? Rook E8. <laughs> Rook E8. <laughs> so now, this is, what move should you play here? It's actually, I was like, okay, I got your queen. But he tricks me. So I take his queen, but he gets my queen. Here we go. All right, king f8. We've seen this before. King's trying to hunt down the knight, right? So how should I try to stop him from getting king takes knight? And do not look on your phone for the answers, okay? It's just pretty simple. Our feelings. Um, knight to e6. Just give him the knight? Yep. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Bishop c4. Bishop c4. Wonderful. But this guy's like, not so fast. Now what? Yep. Bishop e5. So I want to make him escape. No, so he tries again. It's like, get off that diagonal. I'm like, it's not that easy. Rook attacks my pawn. I defend it, but removes the defender, but I get his d pawn. So it all equals out. <laughs> Rook attacks the bishop.
So I could just play knight c3 here, but I take first. <laughs> oh, I could not play knight c3 here. Maybe, well, maybe I could have, and it's psychological, right? You, he, he never know. He would never know. So bishop attacks. Now I'm playing in a team tournament. So look, this guy, he's like me. He's, he, he doesn't want to resign, right? He likes to play on forever and ever and ever. So if you're a kid, you could probably still get away with this, OK? So this is the most satisfying move in chess. When somebody makes a move to like protect a pawn or protect a square, and then you just do it anyway. And I would just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And this guy's eyes got all big. He's like so excited, so excited. I'm making a comeback. Not really, kid. So I'm just laughing and laughing and laughing. His dad's looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, I gave a high five to my teammates. <laughs> and then after Rook takes, he's like, well, I'll protect the C pawn. And then I'm like, kid. Just give it up. And then, boop, resign. So that started my like 19 game win streak to start off 1999. So that was another good year for Michael J. Kummer. Hopefully you learned a lot about psychology, chess, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Get your mindset. Be playing before move one. Play to win the game. Be talking. Like, even if you can't trash talk, have a constant, uh, you know, uh, stream a thought with yourself and figure out what's going on. And hopefully, you don't have to read books. You don't have to study forever. You can just win with the mind games, buddy. All right. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs>